Hello there, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. Today, I have a box of books, and I'm very excited to show you what books I've got. I think there were like at least 10 in here, which is very exciting. I don't know if anyone else has this, but I have like a list of books that I want to buy in my notes app on my phone. So when I see like cool books, you know, people talking about books online that I think sound interesting or anything like that, I add them to this page in my notes. And then basically as a content creator, sometimes I get really exciting and cool opportunities to work with brands that I love. And Wob, who used to be called Wad of Books, um, but they recently changed their name to Wob, reached out to me to work together on a TikTok video. So that's what this is for. This video that you're watching right now is not sponsored. Just for full disclosure, I just wanna say that I am working with Wob over on TikTok. However, I have been a Wob customer for years and years and years because basically they sell pre-loved books. And I love buying books secondhand. It's so much more sustainable, it's better for the planet and much more affordable. So when they said that I could order some books for this campaign, I was buzzing. I don't think I've ever responded to an email so quickly because I had my list ready to go in the notes app. Like I was like, I have been preparing for this moment. And so today I just wanted to give you a little haul of the books that they very kindly sent me. So yeah, for full transparency, this video right now is not sponsored at all, but the TikTok that I'm making with them is. So yeah, I'm just a fan and I wanted to show you these books. So firstly, we have Lessons by Ian McEwan. I have been eyeing up this book every time I go into the bookstore because it is so stunning and beautiful and Ian McEwan is such a respected author and yet I've never read any of his books and this one has been catching my eye. When the world is still counting the cost of the Second World War and the Iron Curtain has descended, young Roland Bain's life is turned upside down. He is 2,000 miles from his mother's protective love, stranded at an unusual boarding school when his vulnerability attracts his piano teacher Miriam Cornell, leaving scars as well as a memory of love that will never fade. So I guess it's about an inappropriate relationship with a teacher, I suppose. Wow, this edition is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, like, this is secondhand and it looks brand new, so that's why I love buying um, from Wob. Next we have The Virgin Suicides. This is a book I have been wanting to read forever. It's like a modern classic, and it's a book that, you know, you keep seeing it, and every time you go into the store, you're like, I need to read that at some point. Well, now I have a copy of it. So now the pressure is on to actually read this. So originally published in 1993, The Virgin Suicides is considered a modern classic and signaled the arrival of a major voice in American fiction. In a quiet suburb of Detroit, the five Lisbon sisters commit suicide one by one over the course of a single year. As the boys observe them from afar, transfixed, they piece together the mystery of the family's fatal melancholy in this hypnotic and unforgettable, unforgettable novel of adolescent love. How fascinating is that? So this is the 25th anniversary edition. And yeah, I feel like this is a book that I've been meaning to get around to for a really long time. So that's why it was on that notes app and now it is in my hands. This, on the other hand, is a very recent release. And listen, I know I said I would stop judging books by their covers, but are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? This is so stunning and beautiful. This is They're Going to Love You by Meg Howery. Also the title, I absolutely adore. Um, I've said this before, but I love titles that are kind of long, like a five word title. Stunning. Jamie Attenberg describes it on the cover as a perfect book. Let me see what it's about. Throughout her childhood, Carlisle Martin got to see her father, Robert, for only a few precious weeks a year when she visited the brownstone apartment in Greenwich Village he shared with his partner, James. Brilliant but troubled, James gave Carlisle an education in all that he'd held there in life, literature, music, and most of all, dance. Seduced by the heady pull of mentorship and hoping to follow in the footsteps of her mother, a former ballerina, Carlisle's aspiration to become a professional ballet dancer bloomed. But above all else, she longed to be asked to stay at the house on Bank Street, to be a part of Robert and James's sophisticated world, even as the AIDS crisis brings devastation to their community. Damn, I think this is going to be absolutely stunning and maybe break my heart. Everything about this sounds stunning, so yeah. They're going to love you, and hopefully, I'm going to love this book. Back to the classics, we're like oscillating between modern classics and contemporary novels. Anyway, so this is Invisible Man. Again, it's a book I've been meaning to get around to for a very long time. First published in 1952 and immediately hailed as a masterpiece, Invisible Man is one of those rare novels that have changed the shape of American literature. For not only does Ralph Ellison's nightmare journey across the racial divide tell unparalleled truths about the nature of bigotry and its effects on the minds of both victims and perpetrators, it gives us an entirely new model of what a novel can be. Could you have sold that to me any better? No. That is Invisible Man. And you know, right now I'm reading a book called A Visible Man, which I guess is riffing off this cover. Um, a Visible Man is by um, Edward Eninfall, who is the uh, editor-in-chief of British Vogue. 
Um, and I love when pieces of writing bounce off each other. So um, I'm intrigued also to read Invisible Man and then see um, how this inspired the title of A Visible Man by Edward Enninville. So that's cool. That's a cool little thing. Speaking of cool little things, Sula by Toni Morrison. This I've heard such great things about. I've read loads of Toni Morrison books and never been disappointed. Two girls who grow up to become women, two friends who become nothing worse than enemies. In this brilliantly imagined novel, Toni Morrison tells the story of Nell Wright and Sula Peace, who meet as children in the small town of Medallion, Ohio. Their devotion is fierce enough to withstand bullies and the burden of a dreadful secret. It endures even after Nell has grown up to be a pillar of the black community and Sula has become a pariah. But their friendship ends in an unforgivable betrayal, or does it end? Terrifying, comic, ribald, and tragic, Sula is a work that overflows with life. <sighs> I mean, look, Toni Morrison was like the most brilliant writer ever, and she writes in such a captivating way, so I cannot wait to read another one of her works. Speaking of things I can't wait to read, <laughs> we have There There by Tommy Orange. You know, the pipeline that I love is when you can see my bookstore videos when I go to bookstores and I'm like filming all of these covers and like filming all the books that I want to read in the store. This you would have seen in all of those videos and now I finally own a copy of it, so I'm very excited. Tommy Orange's wondrous and shattering novel follows 12 characters from native communities, all traveling to the big Oakland powwow, all connected to one another in ways they may not yet realize. Among them is Jackie Redfeather, newly sober and trying to make it back to the family she left behind. Dean Oxendine pulling his life together after his uncle's death and working at the powwow to honor his memory. 14-year-old Orville coming to perform traditional dance for the very first time. Together, this chorus of voices tells of the plight of the urban Native American, grappling with a complex and painful history with an inheritance of beauty and spirituality, with communion and sacrifice and heroism. Hailed as an instant classic, There There is at once poignant and unflinching, utterly contemporary and truly unforgettable. I have not read anywhere near enough Native American voices, so I think this is going to be a really important book to read, and it's like divided up by the different um, characters, so that's going to be really interesting. This next book is a book I've actually already read. Well, I listened to it as an audiobook, but when I really enjoy an audiobook, I always want it as a physical copy too, so I ordered this one. This is Cultish, um, which is all about the language of fanaticism. So it's basically about how cults draw people in and then treat them, and the language that they use to do so. And then, so that's like the primary focus, but then as a secondary focus, she talks about how companies and MLMs and organizations use the language of cults to make people feel part of something and have loyalty towards that thing. So it's an interesting exploration of a very specific type of language and a very specific use of language. So I enjoyed this. I didn't think it was a perfect book by any stretch of the imagination, but I did find parts of it really fascinating. So. I wanted to have a physical copy that I could refer back to. Next, we have Frederick Backman's Anxious People. I loved A Man Called Uva, and so I wanted to read another work by this author. So this is described as, looking at real estate isn't usually a life or death situation, but an apartment open house becomes just that when a failed bank robber bursts in and takes a group of eight strangers hostage. Each of them carries a lifetime of grievances, hurts, secrets, and passions that are ready to boil over. None of them is entirely who they appear to be. In short, they are the worst group of hostages in the world. But as the minutes tick by, they begin to suspect that the criminal mastermind holding them hostage might be more in need of rescuing than they are. As the authorities and the media surround the premises, these reluctant allies will reveal surprising truths about themselves and set in motion a chain of events so unexpected that even they can hardly believe what happens next. Anxious People is ingeniously constructed about the enduring powers of friendship, forgiveness, and hope the things that save us even in the most anxious of times. Frederick Backman is such a talented author, I cannot wait to dive into another one of his books. Okay, next, I've seen this book absolutely everywhere and I'm so curious. So this is Mexican Gothic, which is a reimagining of the classic Gothic horror novel, a story about an isolated mansion in 1950s Mexico and the brave socialite drawn to its treacherous secrets. The cover is very much giving me like Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I think it's gonna be a different vibe. This is like a book talk favorite and I'm just curious as to what this is gonna be about. Whoa, look at that. It's so beautiful. Damn, that should have been the cover. Why was that not the cover? Anyways, this is a book that is a little bit out of my comfort zone of what I would normally read, and for that reason, 
I'm looking forward to it. This is Tell Me Lies, which is being turned into a Hulu series soon, or maybe has already been turned into a Hulu series at this point in time. When did this come out? Let's see. Oh, 2019, so it probably already is a Hulu series. Well, anyway, this is Tell Me Lies by Carola Lovering. Lucy Albright is eager for a fresh start when she arrives at her small California college and immediately embraces all the college life has to offer. New friends, wild parties, stimulating classes. And then she meets Stephen. Charming, attractive, complicated, devastating. Confident and cocksure, Stephen sees something in Lucy that no one else has seen, and she's quickly seduced by the sense of possibility that his attention brings her. Meanwhile, Stephen is determined to forget an incident buried in his past that, if exposed, could ruin him, and his single-minded drive for success extends to winning and keeping Lucy's heart. Lucy knows there's something about Stephen that isn't to be trusted. Stephen knows Lucy can't tear herself away and their addicting entanglement will have consequences they never could have imagined. That is Tell Me Lies. And then there's two more books in here. Firstly, we have The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, yeah, this is a classic. A father and son walk alone through burned America. Nothing moves in the ravaged landscape save the ash on the wind. It is cold enough to crack stones, and when the snow falls, it is grey. The sky is dark. Their destination is the coast although they don't know what, if anything, awaits them there. They have nothing, just a pistol to defend themselves against the lawless bands that stalk the road. The clothes they are wearing, a cart of scavenged food, and each other. The road is the profoundly moving story of a journey. It boldly imagines a future in which no hope remains, but in which the father and his son, each though other's world entire, are sustained by love. Awesome in the totality of its vision, the road is an unflinching meditation on the worst and the best that we are capable of. Ultimate destructiveness, desperate tenacity, and the tenderness that keeps two people alive in the face of total devastation. Holy moly, right? And I love that this is just a plain black cover. It's like, let the story speak for itself, you know? And then the final book that I got was The Trial by Franz Kafka. I've been desperate to read another Kafka book because I've only read Metamorphosis and I know that people really love his writing. I've seen so much of his writing online and been like, holy moly, that is gorgeous, I need to read more of this. So, written in 1914 but not published until 1925, a year after Kafka's death, the trial is the terrifying tale of Joseph K, a respectable bank officer who is suddenly and inexplicably arrested and must defend himself against a charge about which he can get no information. Whether read as an existential tale, a parable, or a prophecy of the excesses of modern bureaucracy, wedded in the madness of totalitarianism, the trial has resonated with chilling truth for generations of readers. And you know what? I am next in line in that generation of readers. I'm ready to let this consume me. And that is my book haul. As always, let me know which of these books you think sounds most interesting, which would you most like to read? And which should I read first? Which should be my priority here? Which would you choose? I'm so, so grateful to Wob for working with me on my TikTok and um, to you guys for making this possible that I get to work with brands I absolutely adore. Oh gosh, okay, the, the books are falling onto me. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching this video. All the best, stay in touch, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you very, very soon. Bye-bye, and follow me on TikTok. <laughs>